Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to do another roster breakdown video. This time we are talking about the New York Excelsior, the NYXL, my favorite team in the Overwatch League. So let's jump into it. Let's talk about this team and discuss what their roster for 2021 looks like. The NYXL, of course, are one of the best known teams in the Overwatch League. They have been one of the teams that has found the most success throughout the Overwatch League. They were the team with the best record in 2018. They were the third best record in 2019. They finished this 2020 season with um, the number seven seed, a 16 and eight record with a plus 20 differential. So the season didn't go the way they had hoped. And despite having the best record in 2018, of course, they were unable to win the grand finals. And after seasons of progressively kind of finishing a little worse and a little worse than they had the previous season, this roster underwent a major, major, major update. Mono, Who Are You, uh, Hotba, Nene, uh, Sabiobi, Libero, Animo, everybody on this team, Mondu, uh, Hawksall, of course, retiring. The entire team, as it was, pretty much gone. Two players remaining from last season. We'll talk about them in a little bit but this is a team that had a ton of changes and uh yeah so let's start with the support line usually i start with uh, the tanks of the dps but for this team i want to start with the support line because the one big piece that this team held on to from the 2018 2019 and 2020 roster is the 2018 mvp Jonak, the only player in Overwatch League history, at least as of this point, which I don't expect it to change anytime soon, to have played in every single map that his team has played since 2018. So very impressive from Jonak. He is a very good player. He is one of the best flex supports in the league. Arguably, he has not been up to that same 2018 performance in the past several uh, seasons. But he is still super talented and still one of the best. And somebody who I think that they wanted to build this roster around specifically because they know just how good he is. They want him to be the focal point for this team. So for the support line, they paired him up with Friday. Now Friday, an interesting player, a rookie, coming out of the team Oz Gaming or OZ Gaming. OZ Gaming is an interesting team. They have not been a successful team in Contenders Korea over the past several years. Um, they finished uh, in the bottom two of the 2020 season two for Korean contenders. Uh, for the first four weeks that they participated in, they got, um, you know, fifth through eighth, they got ninth through 12th, and ninth through 12th again, and then fifth through eighth again. They've been pretty, pretty bad uh, since they have joined uh, Korean contenders. So it's a team that hasn't been very good. But interestingly enough, three of the players from this team are actually in the Overwatch League. You've Skewed with the Gladiators, Checkmate with the Mayhem, and Friday with the NYXL. And it's interesting when you have players like Sanguinar, for example, uh, who are not in the Overwatch League. They are in Contenders again. Um, but you have a player like Friday who impressed, or must have impressed, in the uh, scrims and... and tryouts for him to get the spot on this roster so it's an interesting player an interesting signing certainly one of those rosters that has some some hidden talent potentially that just they didn't have the same they didn't have the best team coordination best coaching whatever it may have been maybe it was just a bad main tank or just a bad tank line that was holding them back um i'm not 100 positive but i do think friday is a very interesting signing when you have like i said someone like sanguinar who was one of the most impressive players last season um who isn't in the league right now. He is uh, in Contenders. I believe he is with... Um, I don't actually remember who he's with, so I'll make sure to <laughs> look that up. But it, it is an interesting thing to look at um, when you have some of these players that are not signed and someone from a, one of the weaker teams, and three players from that weaker team, to be exact, uh, are all signed. Sanguinar, O2 Blast, that's where he is. So... I'm intrigued by Friday and the way he plays. I hope these two will have the uh, 
the needed flexibility. I think they need somebody who's good on the BAP. Jonak's BAP has never been super impressive to me. Friday's not really known for his BAP. He's more known for his Lucio, his Mercy, and his Brig. So uh, I would like to see them potentially bring in another support player for that BAP role, for those double flex support roles, and specifically one who is good uh or pretty good at least at the BAP. I think that is something they should still consider. I don't think that this is a perfect support line. I think there are potential holes there, um, and I think that is the one that they need to look at the most because I thought that throughout last season, BAP Ana, BAP Zen, uh, mostly BAP Ana, but BAP Zen was something that kind of uh, had a decent role in the meta every so often, and I think that's something you can't be banking on not happening <laughs> again. Uh, when it was something that I felt was pretty, pretty common at times last season. Moving on to the tank line. There are two Overwatch League veterans on this uh, lineup. The first for main tank is Yakpung. Now, Yakpung played for the Toronto Defiant back in 2019. Though in 2020, he was in contenders with O2 Blast. Um... Yakpung was not a great main tank when he played for the Toronto Defiant. He he was pretty weak. Uh, he got replaced uh, during the season, then also kind of gained his spot back. But the time that he spent in Contenders Korea has been pretty big for him and has been one of the things that has elevated him to be now on this, this NYXL team. And um, he, he's certainly a player I have my eyes out for. You know, I, I can't ignore and forget about his his relatively weak performances that he had when he was a member of the Toronto Defiant when he was in the Overwatch League and he was arguably the worst main tank in the league back then but he has improved a lot and I think he has a ton to prove now that he's back in the Overwatch League and I think he's the type of player I would hope gets a nice redemption arc not just because I'm an NYXL fan but also because something like Fearless happened last season where you go you have a a bad season you grind your way back through contenders and you come back up and maybe you are on a really good team maybe you are the leader for a team maybe you're able to to elevate your your team to to new heights because of you and you have improved and done everything you have been able to do to become better as a player now where i am very interested is the partner that they have for yakpung is bianca the only other player aside from Jonak from the 2020 NYXL roster to return to this team. And can I just say, oh boy, I am in love with this move. If you have been watching for uh, a while, this past season I was pretty much on the Bianca hype train. I thought that the NYXL needed to give Bianca more playtime aside from, from Hoppa or over Hoppa. I was never really impressed by Hoppa as the season, well, at the beginning of the season I thought he was okay, but as the season progressed he kind of, I started to notice more issues with Hoppa and felt that the team would be better when Bianca came in. Bianca did come in, performed a lot better, and I think that them giving him another chance is really, really good to see. Presumably they tested a bunch of different um, off tanks, and Bianca was the one they were the most impressed by, which is nice to see. I thought his Sigma last year was very good, and his Zarya especially was very good uh, when they ran that Ball Zarya composition, which might be meta uh, coming up because we didn't see a ton of Ball. Zarya might be something that they pair with with the the Sigma, though I doubt it. It would probably uh, be um, Diva. That's what we've been saying recently, at least. Which even still, Bianca's Diva is good. Um, his Sigma was was fine when we saw it. We didn't see enough of it. I know I said it was really good. We didn't see enough of his Sigma, I think, to really kind of know how good it was. But I, I thought that it was it was good enough when he was playing. And I thought that, you know, he, he can improve enough when playing uh, to be able to have an even stronger Sigma going into this 2021 season. So I'm a huge fan of this move, this, this, this bringing back in of Bianca, I think he is a really good player with a ton of potential and still a lot of room to grow. And I think that his performances last season were good enough still um, to be something you can be proud of and be a player you can build around. So I think this Bianca Yakpung tank line, they're both 19, they're both pretty young. Yakpung is almost 20 at this point, but these are two relatively young players who still have a, a lot of time to kind of 
improve and get better. And I think that is the key for this team is, is these two tank players finding their stride. I'm a little worried about Yakpung, of course. And I'm still a little worried about Bianca because he's a player who didn't get a ton of playtime last season. He, he was still relatively... Uh, he, he wasn't run a ton um, down the stretch. Um, if you remember, he was the person who won my 7th um, Player of the Year award, the award that I gave to like the player who had a major impact for their team with only a little bit of playtime. Um, I, I thought he, he was very good at that, so... He is a player, of course, I'm keeping my eye out, and I hope that he's uh, he's someone who, who impresses. But moving on to the DPS line, there are four DPS players, which, thank you, New York, you understand that you need DPS flexibility um, to find success in the Overwatch League. I think a lot of teams don't fully understand that. You know, you look at, like, Florida last season, they got screwed by their lack of flexibility at DPS. Even the San Francisco Shock, after they lost Architect and Sinatra, struggled. They didn't have a great Genji player. Granted, they did um, in the back um, that they didn't really feel like pulling out, and they kind of had to work with trying to figure who their best Genji was. But in general, you kind of look, there was a bunch of stuff like that where there were teams that didn't have a ton of DPS players. New York has invested fully this offseason into making sure that they have enough DPS players that they can play anything, that they don't have to worry uh, potentially not having a diverse enough hero pool to find success. And this is a, uh, a DPS lineup that I do not think will give New York that problem. The big name in this DPS lineup, of course, is Ivy. Spent last season with the Philadelphia Fusion. He was one of the best flex DPS players on that in the league last season and, and a huge part of the success, I believe, that uh, the uh, Philadelphia Fusion found. Formerly, even before that, with the Toronto Defiant, so he did play alongside Yakpung back in 2019, so that is some synergy you have pre-existing there, which is always nice to see. Ivy, of course, flex DPS player, um, very good Mei, his Genji's pretty good, uh, his Hanzo is very good, um, those are kind of the heroes that stand out to me the most with, with Ivy, so very good pickup for them, and they pair alongside him in terms of other, another flex DPS player with Feather. Um, Feather, uh, pretty good Sombra, good Farah. Also, you know, plays the Genji, the Mei. Uh, also, you know, known somewhat for his Echo. So there's obviously some crossover there, which is fine. You kind of, that's not a bad thing to have um, with your uh, DPS lineup. Like there should be some crossover at least because you don't want one that can't play. You, know, you don't want somebody who can play Mei, but then can't play Echo. If you need somebody who can play Mei and Echo, or you need someone that can do both in one match. So you definitely want to have some of that, that flexibility. Feather comes from Talon Esports, who have been a pretty successful team in uh, recent history. They uh, were in Contenders Korea, uh, and also were in uh, Pacific before that, before Con Contenders Pacific got shut down. Uh, they finished top four in 2020 season two, Contenders Korea. They were dominating in Contender Pacific pretty much all the time. So, you know, this is a team that had some very good players on it. So, definitely uh, a team to be on the lookout for because they are impressive. And they're a team that I think will will have a lot of huge, huge, huge names. Uh, you know, their, their tank line of Jongu and Piggy got picked up with Houston Outlaws, Feathers with the NYXL. So... There's some some good names here and some some good uh, some good players that came from that team. So I'm definitely looking for Feather to be uh, the secondary flex DPS player on this team. I think Ivy will be the one who gets most of the playtime. Feather gets the playtime if they need like a Sombra a specialist in a in something, or if just he's better on whatever heroes, um, uh, like you know they they might need like the double flex DPS. Thing going on um, or like I said if they need like a specifically like a, a hero that he's just better at um, but with the hitscan DPS they have two players there as well they have Flora who comes from team Diamond which not uh, a team that has been uh, super well known and had a ton of success uh, throughout their time uh, they did well in Open Division Season 3, 
and in Contenders Trials, but in the actual Contenders 2020 Season 2 for Korea, they finished uh, 7th, 8th, you know, bottom of the uh, thing there for the most part. Um, but there's some, some, some pretty good names have come from that team. Uh, you have Takoyaki is in the league now, um, and of course Flora joining as well. Um, Flora has some history before that, playing for Meta Athena, also played for O2 Blast uh, back in 2019. So once again, you have some pre-existing synergy there um, with some of these other O2 Blast uh, teams uh, and, and former teammates uh, who, who played together back in 2019, which is something pretty good uh when you have people who played together even if not everybody is from uh, the same uh era some of them at least have some connections to each other uh in various different places so that's always nice he is another player that can have like your sombra which is something that feather also runs so once again you have some crossover but he's also got his the mccree the widowmaker the ash and i believe he's also got a pretty good tracer i could be remembering wrong but i think that's something he's known for um as well final dps player guangbung coming from uh contenders china actually he played on team cat who were pretty good uh they had a Top two finish in Contenders 2020 China Season 2 Week 3. They also did pretty well in Open Division and Contenders Trials. So, interesting team. He is going to be their, their Widowmaker, Ash McCree, specifically, like, very obviously hit skin specialist. Uh, that is Guangbung's thing. That is what he is going to bring to the table for this team. He's currently actually 17, but by the time the season starts, he'll be 18, so it doesn't really matter that much. Um, but th this this DPS lineup, you get everything you need out of it. You have some young, talented players in Guangbung, Flora, and Feather, who, while they might not always be um, at the top level, especially at the beginning of the season, they have a ton of potential to get higher and get better as the season goes on. And you have Ivy in that DPS lineup, who is very good and has been one of the top dps players in the past year for the overwatch league and was even pretty good when he was with the toronto defiant even if he wasn't the best he was definitely one of the better players um that was on that that pretty weak defiant roster so i think as a whole the the, the dps line was very strong for new york as a whole roster though i think they're very interesting there's been a lot of stuff going on recently and going around recently. There were some some scrims that were leaked between the NYXL and the San Francisco Shock and um, a lot of kind of like news and stuff or just people have been kind of going around to talk about how the NYXL are very like, they look good and the scrim bucks on the NYXL are very high. And while that's always something that you like to hear and something you would like to, to see for a team that has made a move like this, um, you, you know, you don't know for sure what's going on and how good they're going to be. What's most interesting to me is the the way they've built this roster. I, I think this is a well-built roster. I think a lot of people looked at this and said, though, they're going to go with a budget roster. Or they're going to make like a pretty weak roster. This isn't the 2020 London Spitfire. This is a genuine attempt to to build a new roster, cutting some of the pieces, finding new talent, and trying to build a roster that works better to the strengths that they need with Jonak. This roster is built with Jonak in mind. That was not the case for the old roster. They know Jonak is good. They know they can build around Jonak. And that is what they're going to continue trying to do for as long as they can. And I think that is definitely something that works in their favor. If they kind of plan the entire roster around that in a way they didn't in the past. In terms of where I think this team kind of lies overall, it's difficult to place a team when you have so many new pieces on there and you don't have, you have so many rookie pieces. Like, yeah, you have Jonak, Yakpung, Bianca, and Ivy who all have Overwatch League experience. But even then, like, you know, Yakpung hasn't played in over a year in the Overwatch League. And so how who knows how much better he's going to be um, exactly. You know, he'll probably be better, but... Where's he going to fall in line when he hasn't been playing as a lot of these other Overwatch League main tanks in a while? Who knows? Bianca, pretty limited playtime last season, so he's another one where it's like, well, how good is he going to be? 
you know, you kind of know you can get good performances out of Jonek and Ivy, but the rest of these rookies, you don't really know. So it is a little difficult to place them exactly. Um, but it, it is an interesting uh, roster to look at. But I feel like in terms of placement, they are going to be in Asia, so it's a little bit difficult to say for sure where this roster is going to place because you don't really know um, what's going on with some of these rosters. And these rosters are really good from what we have seen in Asia. I think some of them might still have a couple players that they add, but they're probably mostly finished. Um, but there's also you know the question marks around the LA Valley and what are they going to be? Are they going to be that roster we know now or... Are these rumors uh, from Halo of Thoughts true? Who really knows there? So it's interesting to see. I think this team's comp, though, like where they kind of fall in the standings is either like the Florida Mayhem from 2020 as like their absolute peak and the worst they can be is like the London Spitfire of 2020. I think they'll probably fall somewhere in the middle. So somewhere in like the... 10 range around there like the gladiators were last season or the hongjo spark were last season where they'll get some wins against some pretty good teams and they might even be in the same like spot they were last season like seven but ultimately i don't think they're gonna find a ton of success because i think that there's just so much more work they have to do to actually get there before they're ready to be that good but i think this is a team based on what we're seeing from some of their scrims they, they look pretty good um I think the players I'm most interested in, or the players that I'm most intrigued by and I'm looking out for the most, are Yakpung and Friday, because those two are kind of the biggest question marks. Your DPS players, chances are that not all four of them are going to be great. You know Ivy's a very good player. If he doesn't perform in the same way, you'd be a little surprised, but between Guangbung, Flora, and Feather, like at least one of them should hit, and if it's ideally Guangbung or flora that's better because it gives you that kind of good strong flex dps and a good strong hit scan dps but it's friday the rookie uh, from a relatively weak contenders team and yakpung the player who after a year out of the overwatch league is now back uh, despite kind of a disappointing performance when he played in the overwatch league those are the two players i'm most intrigued by because you have to hope when you don't have a ton of depth on the roster especially in you, you have one main support and you have one main tank you need you need both of them to be hits. You need both of them to play well, and you need both of them to actually be um, able to compete with some of the best in the league, especially when you're playing in the APAC region, and you have to play against the likes of the Shanghai Dragons, the Seoul Dynasty, uh, the Philadelphia Fusion. Even though I don't think they're going to be as good this year, they still have a very, very, very good um, support line, especially, and a good main tank. You have to be able to compete with some of these really top-level teams. Can they do it? Maybe, but they're the pieces that need to be exceeding expectations uh, for that to happen. So it may be difficult for them, but I do think it is possible, but we'll just have to wait and see. But that is all for me today. Let me know your thoughts on the NYXL's 2021 roster in the comments down below. If you enjoy, consider liking and subscribing for more content like this in the future. That is all for me, though. Thank you once again. I hope you are all staying safe and staying healthy. And until next time, boy, boy.